Hi everybody, David Harper here, and I'm gonna show you 10 items that you may well have at home right now that could make you rich overnight. And I'm talking ordinary things, household items, coins, watches, stamps, old cameras, rugs even, things that you might have stuffed in the loft or hidden in a drawer years ago, thinking that they were useless and worthless. Well, stick with me. Watch the video to the end because I might be about to make you very rich indeed. Let me give you some examples. You might have something at home right now underneath your nose that you could sell tomorrow and buy a new car. You might also have something that could fund the purchase of an executive home and get this, trust me, you might have something at home that you could sell tomorrow that could buy you 50 homes around the world. Watch the video to the end. Make some comments. Have you found stuff at home like the things I'm about to show you that have made you rich? Share your stories. Make us all jealous. Here comes item one that you might have at home that could make you rich overnight. Here we go. Toys. Yes, simple toys that you played with in childhood that you might have boxed up now and stashed them in a cupboard. You see, toys are naturally just thrown away, damaged, burnt, tipped, given away, donated to charity. But those toys that are left, things that you might own right this very moment, are worth very good money. In fact, not very many people know this, but the toy market has exploded over the last 20 years with prices just rocketing. Here are some mind-bending, eye-popping examples of prices paid for humble, ordinary toys. A Barbie doll, yes, a simple Barbie doll. So ordinary, really, made in their multi-millions, and I'm sure you've seen dozens in your time, but if you own one of these dolls from 1959, the first year of production in good condition with its box, you could be looking at a valuation of 5,000 pounds for that. Yes, seven or eight thousand dollars. She looks better now, doesn't she? Now, what about this then? Here is a very pretty doll. Admittedly, it's quite lifelike. It's in really good condition. It was made in Germany in the early part of the 20th century. Now, the Germans were known for making cracking quality toys, including dolls. But this particular doll is so good and so sought after that it sold recently in Bonhams the auction house for $242,000 pounds. Go and dig your dolls out. But not until I've told you about a lovely couple from Stourbridge in England. Now they were donated by a friendly neighbour several years ago a box of Star Wars toys. You know, the movie. These were original toys from 76, 77. So they were the first edition little plastic toys this big. And they were boxed in their original box. Never been opened. I mean, interesting things, no doubt. You probably remember them from the day. Now, the couple in Stourbridge, they didn't know what to do with these toys, so they put them in the garage, left them there for several years, until recently in 2020, they pulled them out and put these toys into auction. Well, I can tell you that the auction room lit up. The Star Wars buyers all over the world went intergalactic and paid for that collection, £250,000. Thank you very much. That's about $330,000 for my American viewers. Isn't that lovely? And here is a lovely top tip when it comes to toys. Keep the packaging, keep the boxes, keep even the till receipts and all the wrapping. Keep them safe because they are fundamental to the value of toys in the future. And if you're going to buy toys for your children, your grandchildren, for goodness sake, educate them, tell them to look after the toys, keep the packaging even better. Don't play with the toys. Put them away for their future. Bring them back out when they're 21 
and buy a car. Right, let's move on to number two, the second item I predict you possibly have at home that could make you rich overnight. Let's take a look at rugs. Yes, rugs. Now you might have noticed that the dog has arrived. This is Rosie. She comes and she goes at will. But let's talk then about rugs. Now you might not have a rug at home, but don't skip this section. You never know if a rug is going to come into your life at some point in the future. You might buy a house with a rug left in it. You might find one in the loft or granny might own a rolled up rug. Rugs can be very interesting indeed. And even if they're old and smelly and a bit worn, they can be worth very good money. Take a look at this rug right, right now. That rug here is delicious. The colours are vibrant. It is handmade. It's about a hundred and something years old. It was made in Persia and I've got to tell you that rug is very special indeed in the world of rugs. You may not have that exact rug, however if you do, you have just won the lottery several times over because that rug there was sold by Sotheby's The Auction Room for 20 million pounds. 20 million, Rosie. 20 million pounds for that rug. Keep an eye on rugs. Let's go to the third object I predict that you have at home that could make you rich overnight. Here we go. And we go on to watches, one of my favourite areas. I adore watches, wrist watches in particular. And you know, the wrist watch market has followed the toy market over the last 20 years. Prices have absolutely gone crazy with certain brands like Rolex, particularly for sports models. Some of those models have quadrupled in value. So that's a very strong market. But take a look here at this pocket watch. Now pocket watches haven't fared quite as well over the last 20 years. The market just isn't as strong for the traditional pocket watch. However, don't disregard them because this pocket watch you're looking at right now is particularly special. And if you've got anything that looks a bit like that, oh my goodness me, you might well be in luck because this was made by Patek Philippe, one of the finest watchmakers on the planet. It's called a complicated watch because it's very complicated. It's solid gold. It is delicious beyond belief. So delicious in fact that somebody, rightly so, paid for that watch in auction a few years ago, 15 million pounds. 24 million United States of America dollars. How fantastic is that? So top tip, wrist watches gone crazy. Pocket watches, not so good, but don't discount them. If you've got granddad's old pocket watch stuffed in a drawer wrapped up in newspaper, pause this video right now, go and get the watch, open it up, get the name and the brand and research online because you never know, you may well be quids in. So watches are good news. Shall we move on to number four? The fourth item I reckon you have at home that might make you rich overnight. Here we go, here's number four. You just knew I had to involve something Chinese. Well, there are so many areas in the Chinese market I could include, but porcelain is a great one because there's every possibility that you have at home something you've been using as an umbrella stand, a dog bowl, yes, it does happen, or a fruit bowl that could be worth an absolute fortune. You see, the Chinese want to buy back the goods that were lost to them in the 19th and early 20th century. And you know what? America has the most millionaires on the planet, followed by China. China has a lot of millionaires. And the great thing about Chinese millionaires is this. The Chinese want to buy their pieces back and they search the globe, finding the finest objects and they will pay handsomely for them. The problem is, it's very difficult, even for people like me, 
in the business to work out which Chinese object is really worth 100,000 or 500 quid. It's really difficult to predict. In fact, it is possibly the most unpredictable market in the world. But if you take a punt, you put that Chinese thing that you own at home into auction, anything can happen. I'm now going to show you some mind boggling examples. So look closely at the following pieces and rack your brains. Do you have anything stashed in your kitchen cupboard that looks anything like that? Okay, actually, no, take a very close look at this little teapot. It was made in China during the 1700s and recently it was taken to my mate Charles Hansen's auction room in Derby for a valuation by a chap who'd recently inherited it. Now, the guy that owned it didn't think it was really going to be worth much money. In fact, before going to the auction, it even considered just dropping it off at his local charity shop. Anyway, the valuer looked at this thing. It's tiny. I mean, just take a look at it. It's absolutely minuscule. And he thought to himself, this thing has some potential. So they took it in for auction, carried out some research, and get this, they estimated that little enamel teapot at 20 to 40 thousand pounds because of the crazy Chinese market. The owner, of course, was absolutely delighted. It went into sale, but it didn't make 20 to 40 thousand. It sold for 390 thousand pounds. Now the thing is with the Chinese market, in a way I wish I'd, I'd encompassed all types of Chinese stuff because I sold recently for a client a, a monstrosity of a Chinese screen. I valued it along with the auctioneer at five to seven hundred. It sold for thirty two thousand pounds. Such a massive area. In fact, I think what I'll do is I'll maybe make a video specifically around Chinese objects. So don't forget to subscribe and come back and check out the videos because I will do something. But before I move on, something even better than this little teapot was a vase, a Chinese vase from the 18th century that sold in Ireland in December 2020. Again, the auctioneers knew this thing was lovely, but they put an estimate of £450 on that vase. The vase sold for £1.3 million. It is bonkers beyond belief. And if you think all of that is crazy and mind-boggling, your brain is going to hurt when I tell you about this next item. In fact, I'm going to show it to you now. Take a look at this thing. It looks so plain and ordinary. I mentioned dog bowls earlier on. Many dog bowls have turned out to be something very special. This wasn't used as a dog bowl. This is a very important Song Dynasty Chinese Celadon piece. It's about 900 years old. And it's always been a known piece, this thing. It wasn't found in a cupboard or anything like that. But if you just take a look at it, I think you'll agree with me, it could quite easily be found in a cupboard. So ransack your kitchen cupboards. Now pause the video, don't forget to come back, but go and search for something like that. Because if you do find it, you have seriously not just won the national lottery, you have won the lottery of life. Because this important Chinese Song Dynasty Celadon bowl sold through Sotheby's for 24 million pounds. Million, Rosie. 24 million, 30 odd million US dollars. Wow. So remember, the theme here is never judge stuff based on your own opinion. If you think it's rubbish, it's very likely it might be fantastic. So always check out your Chinese objects. And remember, I will make more films on Chinese pieces, so do subscribe. So let's now move on to the next section. Now this is very interesting, and this is going to take you back in time to your childhood yet again. We're going to talk about 
movie posters and here's one I'm currently handling at the moment. And what a cool looking poster that is. You've got to agree. I mean, it's not even a professional photograph. It was a snap taken by my client when he emailed the image to me for me to value this thing. But it still looks so rock and roll. It's unbelievable. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of background information on movie posters. But and whilst I'm doing that, just try and think, imagine how much valuation I have put on that original poster. So it's from the movie Boat Jest, 1939. But remember, these posters were designed to be destroyed, never to be kept. They were literally billboard posters to promote the movie in 1939. Once the movie had run its course, that thing should have been burnt, destroyed and ripped up. It wasn't it was saved. And it's the rarities in this world that the collectors want to buy. And it's a bit like the toy market as well with film posters, particularly posters from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and even 90s, that people want to buy back some of that childhood memory, the feeling they had when they want, went to watch Star Wars, for example. That would be probably the best example to give. But these things are highly collected because they shouldn't really exist. So this poster will be going to auction shortly. How much do you think that poster is expected to sell for? Well, I can tell you the estimate on the poster is seven to 10,000 pounds. Seven to 10,000 pounds. And if you think that's a scary amount of money, let me show you something completely scary. This is gonna scare the pants off you. Yes, it's Dracula, famous movie. The 1931 movie was not just scary and shocking beyond belief. It was also phenomenally popular. So popular then and now that an original Dracula poster, something that should have been destroyed long ago, sold recently in auction in America for $525,000. So you think that movie posters are good news. I'll tell you what's even better news than movie posters, and that is stuff that once appeared in a movie. Movie props, things that appeared on screen. Let me introduce you to a robot that appeared in a movie predictably called Robbie the robot, he's seven feet tall, and he was in the 1956 movie Forbidden Planet. And isn't he just magnificent? Now, of course, Robbie here is a film prop, but now look at him, he's a piece of sculptural art. And what do you think Robbie is made from? Well, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna guess plastic, wood, wire, clay, bits of paint and glue and string. Robbie is pretty well thrown together. Remember, he was made for the 1956 movie, the sci-fi movie, Forbidden Planet. Quality was not everything when it came to Robbie, but today, Robbie the robot is indeed a rare beast. He is so rare, in fact, that he was sold in Bonham's The Auction Room not very long ago at a specialist sale for, Rosie won't be shocked, nothing shocks her, $5.3 million, Rosie. I told you, just over three million pounds for Robbie the Robot. So, here are some top tips when it comes to film memorabilia, in fact, anything to do with film. It's the same with toys. Disregard quality. Condition is important, but more important than that is rarity, and Robbie here is rare. So if it looks rubbish, if it's made from papier mache and glue, and you think it's useless, don't throw it out. Check it out, because I'm telling you, literally, film props, things that featured in famous movies, no matter how rubbish quality they are, can literally be worth their weight in gold. Literally. So, 
Moving on now, that was section five. I'm gonna move on to section six. The sixth item I think that you may well have in your house that could make you rich overnight. Now we're gonna talk about cigarette cards, but more specifically, baseball cards. And you might think this applies only to the American market, not at all. My American viewers will appreciate this, no doubt, but wherever you are in the world, don't for one minute think that baseball cards did not leave America because they did. Now, most Americans know that baseball cards, the very rare ones, are worth fortunes. And I mean mind-boggling fortunes, but the rest of the world is not as well informed when it comes to American baseball cards. So you've probably got more chance in finding a really valuable baseball card outside of America than in. And I want to give you the best example on the planet of the most sought after baseball card. Here is Honus Wagner, also known as Hans Wagner, who in the early part of the 1900s was a superstar celebrity beyond belief, known as the very best baseball player ever to have played in the history of the game. Now this card is about the rarest baseball card on the planet, and there's a very good reason for that. Only a handful were ever made. They reckon only around 60 of these cards were ever produced, which is remarkable, bearing in mind that the tobacco companies produced hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of cards featuring one particular celebrity. So 60 is a very low number and it's remarkable actually because Hans himself was a non-smoker. So the reason there's only 60 is this, that once he discovered that a tobacco company were using him to, to promote smoking, he freaked out and he said, stop it. So the tobacco company had to stop the production because he didn't want to be seen as someone promoting tobacco. Now, if you think that the companies, the tobacco companies were making hundreds of thousands, if not millions of these cards. How long did it take them to make 60? A few seconds. So they admitted to making around 60. Personally, I think very many more of these cards are out there in the big bad world. But we know of around 60. And if you find one of these cards featuring the finest, best, baseball player the world has ever seen, Mr. Wagner, then you could be cashing it in, getting rich overnight to the tune of around two million pounds, three million dollars. So get searching. But remember, if you've got a collection of standard cigarette cards, they're worth buttons because the collectors have dropped off the face of the earth. They really don't exist anymore. There are a few exceptions to that, so check them out. If you've got them at home, just do an internet search, check them out. But the ones to look for are the American baseball players, remember that. And again, remember, quality is not everything. These are just simple printed cards. Finally, on this theme, watch out for fakes, because whenever something is worth a fortune, and it can be faked very easily, in come the fakers. So if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. You've got to keep your wits about you. But if you bag a Wagner, you are rich overnight. Let's move on to the next section. It's paintings, of course it is. This is the seventh item that you may well have in your home right now that you could find, sell, and make yourself rich overnight. And that, I think you'll probably recognize, is this room. It's one of my paintings. So this, ladies and gents, is what you call ruthless self-promotion as an artist. Never mind, let's move on. Paintings, right. Quite possibly, no matter what you hear, this is the easiest area to navigate because all you need is one, the painting, and then two, crucially, the artist. You've got to get the signature. You've got to know who has painted that picture. Then you need to work out, is it an original, a print, 
or a fake and that luckily is not rocket science go back onto my channel and have a look at my video on how to spot a fake and real painting once you've done that and you've got the artist then you search online and if nothing crops up about that particular artist then really draw a line under it because there is nothing special to know no prices no nothing you've got something that is worthless if however the internet lights up with information and prices galore now all you need to do is find out whether this thing is real or fake and there are lots of people out there auctioneers valuers brokers that will be very willing to speak to you because there's big money in paintings just take it to the extreme a moment a pablo picasso he's a household name whether you're into art or not now pablo could paint a painting in an afternoon and that painting that he painted in the 1930s or 40s today is worth 50 million pounds so now you get an idea of how much money is involved in art it is bonkers beyond belief it is the most bizarre section maybe apart from the Chinese market in the world of antiques and art let me give you a I think a fantastic example of a great find that was under the noses of literally tens of millions of people around the world for 10 years do you remember the film Stuart Little and do you remember the painting that is behind the main characters in the movie and sits in the little family's living room above the fireplace well that was simply a movie prop now we talked about movie props earlier on but this is a very different kind of movie prop because it's an original painting bought in a junk stroke antique shop in America by the set designer for the movie they thought it looked right they paid a couple of hundred dollars for it and it was used as a prop in the movie now once the movie was done the set designer was given the painting and they were allowed just to keep it which they did and had it at home for 10 years until an art critic was watching a rerun 10 years later of the movie Stuart Little and he spotted this painting and he thought to himself that looks remarkably like the missing painting by Hungarian artist Robert Bereni if that's how you pronounce his name painted in 1926 and titled the sleeping lady with the black vase now no matter what you think personally of that painting if it really is the missing painting it could be worth a lot of money now he made his opinions known the set designer in America heard about this she did some googling she took it to an expert she discovered it was by someone called Robert Bereni she discovered it was actually a real painting it was the missing painting and they sold it like that for two hundred and eight thousand pounds around three hundred thousand dollars that painting was sat in plain sight hiding in plain sight for 10 years and it just took one expert to clock it while he was laid out on his sofa one lazy afternoon watching a rerun people these paintings are out there and again remember top tip you might look at that painting and love it I do right I'm into modernist paintings of that period you might think it's absolutely revolting well stop it never remember and I'm repeating myself here but it's so important in this world of art and antiques never judge something by your own taste because somebody did with that painting in America they looked at it maybe they inherited it they didn't like it and they sold it cheaply to some antique shop because they personally didn't like it so take nothing from this video apart from this never judge anything based on your taste your taste is rubbish when it comes to the world of art okay so research even if you hate it find out a bit more about it isn't this exciting let's move on to the eighth item I think you may well have a home that you could sell tomorrow and become rich 
overnight. Here we go. Right, now this section is all about oddities, strange things, even stuff you might find in a cellar or, or you might look at a piece of sculpture made out of barbed wire, string and cardboard that you think that maybe an art student made when they were 16 at school. That kind of thing. Again, back to this theme of you cannot judge something based on your own opinion theme. Oddities, strange things you can't explain. and You would ordinarily throw away. Well, after this video, you'll never throw anything away at all ever again until you check it out. And I'm going to include little wooden carvings, objects that you look at and you think, well, maybe that took someone a couple of hours to, to make. It's not my cup of tea. It's not for me. Let's throw it away or give it away. Things like this. This is a very special object. It's a carved duck. Now, if you and I were out shopping at an antiques fair somewhere, we, including myself, would walk past this thing assuming it was maybe a doorstop. And as pretty as it is and unoffensive as it is, it wouldn't be my cup of tea. I probably wouldn't be drawn to that painted duck and if it was priced at a couple of hundred pounds I would probably say to you look it's too expensive let's move on however just shows what I know nobody is an expert in this field it would take a thousand lifetimes to know everything there is to know about all pieces of art and things that are worth stacks of money because this carved duck was made in the 19th century in Massachusetts by a rock star carver of ducks called Lathrop Holmes. Now he was a joiner, a woodman, who as a part-time sideline made ducks. It's not a doorstop, it's a decoy duck. So something that was made to do a job, in other words, float on a pond to attract other ducks to come in so people can shoot the ducks. That's just what it is. But Lathrop is so highly regarded in the world of decoy ducks that that piece there made by him in the 19th century sold in auction in america a few years ago get this hold on to your seat rosie eight hundred and fifty six thousand dollars for a hand carved painted duck what on earth do we know about anything. So there you have it. Oddities. Things you can't understand. Things you don't like. Remember there's a theme here. You were rubbish. You can never tell what's worth money. So on that theme of experts and not knowing everything, let's move on to section number nine, which is the ninth object I think you may well have at home that you could find, sell tomorrow, and make yourself rich overnight. Let's go and visit the world of cameras. And take a look at this camera. Does it not look old fashioned, old technology, old hat? Do you think you've thrown a camera away that looks like that? Well, if you have, then I'm about to ruin your life completely. Sorry about that. However, if you think you've got a camera somewhere stashed away in the house that looks a bit like that, then pause the video now. Go and get that camera, bring it back. Let's compare and contrast. And if you discover you've got one of these exactly, then get in touch, put some comments down below. I'll broker the camera for you with pleasure. Because if you've got one of these, you are suddenly rich overnight and I'm about to change your life forever. This is the Leica Model O made in 1923. It is a delicious camera beyond belief. They reckon there's only about 12 of these things left in the world. And when they say that, to me it means there's probably more out there. So you may well have one of these. And if you do. This is where I'm going to change your life. This camera, the Model O, 1923, 
Leica camera is worth in today's market, and it's only going to go up in price, 1.7 million pounds. Yes, 1.7 million pounds for that camera that is very likely to have been thrown away at some point because it genuinely looks like granddad's old camera that is old hat, old fashioned and taking up space. Kick it out, bin it. Remember, don't bin anything until you check them out. You may well have thrown away 1.7 million pounds in your time. I know, I am the bearer of good news, aren't I? However, let's move on to some more examples. If you haven't got one of these, have you got one of these? Blimey, it doesn't half look like an old crate, doesn't it? But this is one of the earliest known cameras in the world, and it looks nothing. It really looks like an old box, but dates to probably pre-1839. It was found in a German loft during a house clearance. Luckily, the owners didn't throw it away because they thought it looked like tat. They checked it out, they discovered it was worth some money, and they sold it in an auction for 500,000 pounds. Yes, half a million pounds, about 700 and something thousand US dollars for that old box. And if you don't believe anything that I've told you about cameras so far, then go online and search the episode of the great program, The Antiques Road Trip. One of the best programs on television. I'm a bit biased because I'm on it, but my mate Paul Laidlaw bought an old camera on the show. This has become a classic episode. Now, I've got to tell you, Paul Laidlaw knows a lot about antiques, a huge amount about antiques, and he found this old camera whilst filming. He wasn't sure about it, he didn't understand it completely, but he had a gut instinct that it might be something interesting. So he paid the big sum of 60 pounds for this old box of stuff. It went into auction, and guess what? His gut instinct was absolutely right. Search it out, you'll see it unfold before your eyes. That old box of stuff was a camera and he paid 60 pounds for it and then he sold it in auction for 20,000 pounds. There's your proof. So to sum up cameras, pretty simple, in one sentence, old cameras are very good news. Let's move on. To the final object, number 10. The 10th thing I think you have at home, possibly right now, that if you find it and sell it, will make you rich overnight. Stamps and coins. You must have known I was going to mention stamps and coins. I'll also mention that Rosie, as you can see, has disappeared, but she'll probably come back at some point. But stamps and coins, I don't know whether I've ever known anybody that has never owned an old stamp or an old coin or a small collection of both. They're just the kind of things people have. You no doubt have got old coins and old stamps somewhere around your house. Now, it, it's a very interesting market because it's where most people start. I know I did stamps and coins, one of the first things I started collecting as a very young boy because they were cheap. But it's a shocking area, this, because not only can they be shockingly valuable, those that are shockingly valuable are shockingly ordinary looking. So you've got to be very careful. I'm going to show you some examples of stamps and coins that are worth astronomical amounts of money. And I really hope, one, that you have one at home, but two, also, that you haven't thrown away anything like this. This is the Penny Red stamp. It's a British stamp produced during the 19th century, and it was made, shall we say, prolifically. In fact, it is the world's most produced stamp. They didn't make millions of these things, they made billions. Do you have a Penny Red stamp at home that looks like that? Well, if you do, more than likely, it's worth five or 10 
pounds. They're just good, fun things. However, if you do own a stamp like that, I need you to go and get it. I need you to get a magnifying glass and you've got to check out the numbers which are on the side of the stamp within the decoration. You've got to get your eye in very closely and you'll see every penny red carries a series of numbers and these numbers relate to the plate that printed the stamp in their millions. Now the Royal Mail at the time they would run off a bunch of stamps on every new fresh printing plate and then check them through quality control obviously to make sure that the stamps themselves were to a certain standard and when they weren't which sometimes happened those stamps that were printed as samples were destroyed and the plate along with it. However, back in the 19th century, something phenomenal happened to the penny red. Plate number 77, so the printing plate, produced, we reckon, around 100 sample stamps. And the stamps were checked for quality. It was discovered that the plate and the stamps were not quite up to the best quality so the plate was destroyed and so were the stamps supposedly however a bunch of plate 77 stamps so remember the numbers the penny red with the seven seven the two magic numbers in the edges there made it out into the big bad world and ever since those plate 77 penny red stamps made it out and it was discovered they'd gone stamp collectors around the world since then to right now have lived and died searching for the penny red plate 77 and if you have one at home you see those two numbers seven seven that penny red suddenly goes from being worth five to ten pounds to being worth around 500, not 500 pounds, 500,000 pounds, 500,000 pounds, half a million pounds, 770 odd thousand US dollars. And guess what? There are still some out there. If you find one, get in touch with me because I'll broker the sale. And how about this as an example? The world's most expensive stamp, the British Guiana One Cent Magenta. Take a look at that stamp. You'll notice Rosie's back. Take a look at the stamp. Can you believe that's the world's most expensive stamp? When you and I, let's be honest, we look at it and we think it's worth nothing. Well, no matter what I think or you think, the market dictates what something is worth and because this stamp is so incredibly rare it's worth get this 9.5 million dollars and it's worth that because one of these one cent british guiana magenta stamps was sold in auction not very long ago for nine and a half million dollars that's just then what it's worth it's also one of the rarest stamps in the world again it's from the 19th century and it shouldn't have really come into existence but the postmaster in British Guiana in South America was waiting for a delivery of stamps from Britain the ship was delayed at sea he needed to produce some stamps so he ordered a batch of stamps from a local printer in the colonies during the 19th century this is an example of one of them and they are so rare it is painful. And if you're looking at this photograph now and it's rekindling a memory of one day you throwing out or giving away a stamp just like that, then I feel your pain. It must be dreadful. But what about coins? Well, there is no end of valuable coins out there that just look very ordinary. Here is a great example. Do you own anything? that looks like this. The standard British penny coin. Well, I'm quite positive that you do own a coin like that, or you've seen many in your time. But look at the date. 
1933. This is the crucial thing. This is the thing that makes that coin incredibly rare. Because in 1933, barely any of these coins were made. And many of the ones that were made were buried instantly underground because they were used in little time capsules and buried under foundation stones of new buildings, churches, office blocks, that kind of thing. And then during the war, 39 to 45, during the Blitz, towns and cities around Britain were getting obliterated by German bombs. And rumors started spreading about these rare 1933 little penny coins unearthing themselves. And a few came onto the market. And in 1970, one church foundation stone was even dug up in the depth of night and their 1933 coin was stolen and it has never yet surfaced onto the market. So this is a very rare one penny coin. So get rooting through all those boxes of letters and bits and bobs and collectible things and backs of drawers and down the sides of old art deco sofas. Look out for the 1933 British penny coin because if you find one, I can tell you, see you Rosie, the last one sold for 72,000 pounds. That's not bad for an old penny coin. So that's it, we're coming to the end of the video. Rosie's gone for her tea, it's getting dark, it's time to say goodbye. But if you can take one thing from this video, if you want to get rich very quickly overnight by finding stuff at home, then remember, whatever you're looking at, don't judge it based on your opinion. Remember, we know nothing the market decides. So find it, check it out before you throw it out. So from me, David Harper, from Rosie the dog, it's goodbye for now. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, do all of those things, make some comments, keep in touch, and we'll see you soon. Cheerio.